Haria tale se pe mo le ha tsinje no me kwa bona khala gore ga re ka ke ra tsole se pe re le tlogela morena o na re ne ile morena o boe jo tshotse a go ba kwe yina la more to the podium a friend a wonderful young man who lived with Akumzi and of course with other friends shared so many wonderful memories um Dr. Musam Tombing um DR Please ascend the podium so that you can speak on behalf of the friends. As I've already been introduced, I am Musam Tombeni, one of Akumzi's friends. I am here at this point to say a few words about my friend. This week has been a very bad week. I started my 28th birthday two weeks ago Sunday. On the 22nd of April, and the Monday started and I said, this is gonna be a bad week. Everything was going wrong, left, right, center. And here we are now. There are a couple of words I need to share. The words come from Andile, and the other half of this are words that come from me. So I'll start with what Andile has to say because he has another component that he has to cover. Andile says, when I heard the world went silent. I was woken out of my shock by the sound of a ticking clock. I was mad at time, for how dare the seconds tick, the minutes and the hours away, as if life was still normal. You'd often say how if this day ever came, the world would stop for you. You were right my world came to a standstill. Poet Lang Leave comes closest to describing this moment in a quote that reads, when they ask, what was it like to lose him? I answered, it was like hearing every goodbye ever said to me, said all at once. My words are as follows. One week ago, I received a phone call. <clears throat> I received a phone call. Just one second, please. It is well. We Right. 
One week ago, I received a call that changed my life. One week ago, my life, my life was thrown off its axis, and since then, I've been spinning endlessly in such a profound state of confusion that I still don't believe that you're no longer physically with us. I won't lie. I find it very hard to believe that any of this is happening. I'm so puzzled by all that's been happening this week that I found it better to ignore it, to distract myself, to comfort others, to make people laugh, to say it's okay, to keep myself busy, anything but to accept that my best friend is no longer with us. How do I accept that a 29-year-old healthy young man with potential that overflowed and did not only just fill his cup, but the cup of every single person that was around him is no longer an influential part of our lives. How do I do that? I won't lie, I was angry. A part of me still is. I was scared. A part of me still is. I was sad, I was disgusted, I was surprised. All these different emotions. But let me pause there just for a second. Seven days ago, I received that phone call. But eight days ago, I received another phone call. This phone call was from my friend Akumzi. I then decided that I'm going to call him Akumzi Benson, Gulube, Josefina, Jezil. That's how it's saved on my phone. He called me when I was at home in the Val for another family funeral. And the call started like every other call that we've had starts. Tring, tring. I answered. He speaks and he says, darkness. I reply, yes, my fat friend. How can I help you today? I was wearing a suit, so I was... He then says, Mumu. I say, yes, Akumzi, get to the point. What do you want? He says, is it nyamang I say, okay, buddy, you must wrap this up because I'm getting tired of this. He asked where I was and continued to insult me and tell me how lucky I should feel that he has chosen me to be his friend. The call continued on the same wavelength of insults and insults and insults. And at this point, I realized that, okay, this phone call is going south. I no longer want to be a part of it, and I'm going to hang up. Before I could do that, he quickly apologized, something Akumzi never did, and then told me that he was leaving for the Eastern Cape later on that day. But he would keep in touch, and he would see me next week. I agreed to this, quickly dismissed him, but before I could hang up, he stopped me and said, Darkness. I said, yes, Ngulub. He said, I love you, my friend. To which I replied, I love you too, my friend. My last words to you, Akumzi, were, I love you. Out of all the emotions I've felt this week, I experienced the ultimate joy at the thought that the overriding feeling that will linger in my heart is that I love you. I love you, Akumzi. As you lie there right now, I love you. I will thank God every day for the 11 years of friendship and brotherhood that you gave us. I will thank him for the lessons that you've taught me. I will thank him for the love that you showed me. And I know the reason why it hurt so much is because our souls were connected. Most importantly, I will thank him for all the people that you helped to bring into my life so that we can continue with this journey called life. The end of your life has brought a new beginning for the rest of ours. We have gained a mother. We have gained a brother. We have gained nieces. We have gained sisters. We have gained so many Eastern Cape cousins that we're going to be going to Imikiti for the next 40 years. But we are thankful for that. I know I'm not the only person that loved Akumzi Jezile, and anyone that encountered Akumzi 
has the words that I've just uttered. The four words that I think we should all say, and those words are, I love you, Akumzi. So all I ask at this point in time is take a moment to yourself, and I will count to three, and we will all individually say the four words. I love you, Akumzi. One, two, three, I love you, Akums. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am now going to call on stage Sister Kelly to come and bless us.